This video will demonstrate audio to MIDI conversion. We're going to use it for Morse code in this example. We're going to take a Morse code on one side of the converter and take those audio tones and convert them to on-off data to exactly duplicate the CW element length of time, the on and the off time period, and we're going to use that information to key Bipper which will act as a code practice oscillator, all done in free software. Let me demonstrate this first. We're going to uh, show you the MIDI data here. We're going to use Echo CW. It's audio to go into Regate. And from that audio, once it's set properly, it's going to create a MIDI message that keys Bipper. You have to get this set just right so the threshold turns on and off regate. This is just a basic gate and again this is a free VST plug. These are the settings that I found were most useful for this setup. The audio will come in, activate this threshold and send a MIDI note on note 79. and that's this can be any note that your preference is. Each note represents a different note on the piano which represents a different pitch, Morse code pitch, and there are MIDI charts you can look that up. However, we also have another VST plug that can take this frequency and change it to whatever you want, and I'll demonstrate that in just a second. But let me uh, show you the threshold. I'm actually using a keyer This is my logic here. I have unsoldered the speaker connections and connected them to an audio cable out. And the paddles just plug into the keyer. And that plugs into my mic jack after going through a 1K to 8 ohm audio transformer from Radio Shack. And it's like just a couple bucks. What that does is it lowers this audio power and this voltage and it lowers it so where it won't blow out the mic jack and start, you know, cause a lot of distortion from it, just slamming it with too much energy, too much power. So that's how I'm getting the audio into the mic jack. Once it goes into the mic jack, it comes over to regate, and that's what you were seeing on the one side. This left column, so you have to take this slider, and let me demonstrate that. I'll send some dits. So now you don't hear it. If you want a heavy note. So you want it to turn on and turn off as quickly as possible so it duplicates the note as accurately as possible. And this is extremely accurate. Sending dits as fast as the logic key would send it. The logic key dits are on top and the output of Regate key and that other CPO from Bipper is on the bottom and it's extremely accurate. So this is a very impressive system. They, uh, I read somewhere where MIDI speed can send 500 notes per second. And that's a lot faster than we usually need for Morse code, so the accuracy is amazing and it does a lot better than a serial port. Serial port has some glitches in it now and then. You may have noticed that yourself if you use one to key a soft code a software code practice oscillator, you get little glitches in timing, especially when you send a DIT stream like this. But with using MIDI this way, the accuracy is really amazing. So let me uh, demonstrate the MIDI note on, note off message. We're going to take a straight key mode on Echo CW. I'm going to input it to Regate, and it's going to output a MIDI message, and you'll be able to see that with MIDIOX here. So look on this chart here. Right now we're at note off and watch what happens. And then I'll send some dits with the keyer. So the MIDI axis is just a, a viewer to show you what's coming out of Regate. This event's out. I have it going over to a uh, virtual MIDI cable. 
that I set up here with Loop MIDI. This is free software. All these will be in the show notes so you can download them. Okay, let me show you the chain of events. Now, the Bipper itself can be set up pretty easy, and it's a nice little piece of software. And it has different waveforms available. I'm just using the sine. Now, the sine wave itself is pretty harsh. I'll take and draw a line here and you'll hear what it sounds like a little bit. You'll hear both this, the filtered version and the raw. So you can see it's real clicky. So there is no rise or fall time on it. So that's why we need these filters. So it comes into the engineer's filter, which I'm using a Bessel filter. It goes to another filter called the M equalizer. It goes to this M frequency shifter so I can vary the pitch and it goes to us after this it goes through here you might get a little harmonic now and then so this is the final polishing filter then it goes over to a frequency spectrum analyzer a pitch tuner so I can see what frequency I'm at it goes into the input of this ASIO bridge which is has its own virtual audio cables for in and out and that's what's connecting to mumble so that I can send this CW over to Mumble. And at the output of Mumble is also the ASIO bridge. I'll go over that in just a second. Using this gain, which is another free VST, so that I can get just the right amount of gain. Let me show you if here we turn that off. Get the other one. So we're at five to get this. That's just about the right amount. And we're using that spectrum analyzer because it has a great accuracy as far as the how loud the volume is. You want about minus 15. So let me turn it down just a little bit. See how it lowers it? too much so irrespective of how loud I'm hearing it in my sound card that sends the right amount of energy over to mumble which on the V meter ends up about right there and I'm going to open up this gain and you're going to hear what the actual tone <laughs> from Logic here itself sounds like. So it's a very harsh tone. It doesn't really matter what the tone sounds like as long as it's an accurate tone with a steady waveform as far as its timing goes. So that when Regate receives it, it can send the proper MIDI message through its Check, check marking this box right here. This makes a great audio to MIDI converter. And as you can hear, is, this timing is pretty low latency. It's not really detectable. So you shouldn't have any trouble allowing just uh, the milliseconds it takes to go through Regate into the system and out to the sound card. So I'm keen. I'm hearing it as it goes through all this so it starts here goes through all out goes through all these chains and into the sound card and the latency is negligible I, I really can't tell that there's there's a delay at all so you shouldn't have any trouble with your paddles if you do it won't take much but a little bit of practice the average on this system using ASIO for all and I'm at 256 buffer size the latency of this, and I'm using my native sound card, so I'm not using any fancy sound cards, is still less than 50 milliseconds. And that's very easy to get used to. If, if you're real sensitive to that, it won't take you much, much time to uh, practice a little bit. And this is so stable that your brain won't even know, know what's going on after a little bit. You'll, you'll adapt 
automatically you shouldn't even have to worry about it okay so we're coming in the mic jack going to regate and all it's doing is taking that audio and converting it to an on off message so that it can key bipper bippers is just a straight zero rise zero fall time waveform and it goes into the first filter and I'm using this engineers filter and there's lots of selections I'm doing a band pass and after this filter goes to the M equalizer that's how I have it I'm trying to get rid of some frequencies before and after the the center frequency. As you raise this up you have to lower the gain so that you don't distort the stages after it. This just helps to further clean up the audio. After it goes through M equalizer I'm going to the freak shifter which is extremely useful. So if you just don't like that tone and you don't want to fiddle with resetting your keyer just adjust this knob here and this this is really useful everybody likes a certain frequency or and a pitch and no matter what the pitch is on the this side coming in it's going to remain whatever I set it on this freak shifter then after that it goes to a second engineer's filter just to put a final polishing on it and I have the same configuration configuration here after that it's going to the spectrum analyzer to the pitch Let's see if I can get that up here let's bring up the freak and I'll show you this one the combination here that tells you where you're at. So I'm around 760. Let's see if I want to go up to 800. So about 800. If I wanted to keep it at 750. So as you see, that's kind of useful to to know where you're at. That helps you set the filters. You find a pitch by ear what you want, then you look at that VST plugin and then you can set these other filters I'm using 800 so you can you can adjust this up and down to whatever sounds best to you there's quite a bit of choice in here too under the bandpass so you have all these to choose from all one six different ones each one has a different sound for the final filter I kinda like that one because it adds just a little percussion instead of being super smooth like the vessel does. But try it out, see what you think. So we have the sound card out. So let me show you the spectrum and the difference here with these that these filters make. down a little bit. Alright, now let's start taking some filters out. Let's take the final filter out and I'll show you the difference there. We'll bypass it. See how it raised up? You may not be able to hear it, but you can at least see it there. and it takes away some of those low frequency and high frequency components and it does the same thing for anything before this and that pretty much sums up what we're doing here so this allows you to use any rough code oscillator get it into your computer get it over so you can hear it in low latency to your sound card and send it out to whatever you're using if you want to use this for your digital modes to your rig to go out on ICW or some other Morse code of the internet program 
you can choose the uh, VB cables as your bridge for this and I'm using jack router and you'll need if you don't understand what jack router just watch that video that we've made it'll be in the show notes and this seems to be working extremely well converting audio to MIDI and taking that MIDI to key a code practice oscillator thanks for watching